Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining us for this segment, we have Alexander Yampolsky, CEO of Security Scorecard, to discuss why SEC proposed cyber regulations will shine a spotlight on the Chief Information Security Officer, also known as the CISO. Alexander, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Great to be here with you. Thank you for having me. You got it. And recently the SEC proposed regulations that would require publicly listed companies to describe the board's oversight on cybersecurity risk. What does that entail? Well, cybersecurity can be a material risk. If a hacker is hack a company, it could affect the stock price, the market capitalization, trust of uh, consumers into the brand. Uh, so that's why SEC is paying attention. And they proposed a couple of points. So first of all, uh, the companies are going to have to disclose expertise of their boards of directors in cyber, in 10K and 8K reports. They're going to have to disclose what type of governance oversight and processes the companies have in place to manage cybersecurity. And thirdly, they will be required within four days to disclose any material cyber incidents that occurred or a cascade of small incidents amounting to a big one. And that's a very fast notification guideline. So board expertise, notifying about incidents and disclosure of what uh, controls you have in place. And these regulations will shine a spotlight on the CISO. What is the role of the CISO and why are they increasingly getting a seat at the table with the board? 100%, well the CISO uh, used to be a technical uh, function, but increasingly it's a stakeholder at the board. And uh, the role of a CISO really is not just to tell uh, people within a company that no, you can't do it, but how do you become a strategic business enabler? How do you translate technical risks into business terms that the board members can understand? And so I really envision a CISO having a fully fledged seat at the table, just like a CFO or a general counsel in a company does. How can CISOs begin to lead those impactful and effective conversations with the executive board teams who might not understand the, the workings of security teams. 100%, well, first of all, what you cannot measure, you cannot improve. You need to have a way to quantify and measure risk using a set of objective and trusted KPIs. The boards understand the language of PL, mm -hmm. um, so you don't envision a situation where you're a board member and in the middle of a conversation, you say, Alex, what's EBITDA? You're gonna get a tap on your shoulder and say, you know, Jill, you need to learn PL. but board members don't know what web application firewalls or denial of service attack is. So the CISO needs to educate the board, uh, do tabletop exercises, and then ensure that you bring a cybersecurity expert to educate the board and have this technology security expertise at the board level. KPIs, expert on the board, and then tabletop exercises. What approaches can CISOs arm themselves with to build a common language to bridge that gap between the technical talk and the financial talk? Well, as they say, board members are from Mars and CISOs are from Venus. Mm. Um, the CISOs uh, need to avoid using technical jargon. They need to use uh, KPIs to quantify and measure risk. They need to explain what could happen uh, if a particular event occurs and then what you can do to prevent an event. So for example, uh, instead of saying, oh, a denial of service attack is something that affects your routers, explain that you could lose $3 million within one hour of an outage and it's gonna cost you $100,000 to mitigate the threat. So start expressing security in dollar terms, be an equal uh, stakeholder at the table, and think about how to enable the business. How do you actually leverage security as a business catalyst because all the information is digitized. There's a proliferation of OT and IoT devices, well interconnected to each other. So the attack surface is getting exponentially more complex. So how do we really start having CISOs, not just as technical people, but as business enablers to open new opportunities? Well, not only that, but you also have the cost of reputation. Let's say you have a data breach. I mean, that takes a long time to recover from that, and th you can't put a dollar amount on the reputation cost either. 100%. Yeah. You know, and consumers are increasingly uh, aware of the cybersecurity implications. If you go to a local supermarket and then your credit card is exposed, your home address is exposed, it's gonna take time for you as a consumer to recover your trust into that organization. So it's really, uh, you know, uh, having a strong security is as important as having a strong balance sheet. You had mentioned bringing in a cyber expert. Wouldn't that be the CISO? What's the benefit of bringing in another cyber expert? I think you need to have a set of checks and balances and it all starts from the top. 
if you have a security expert on the board, then you're going to have these conversations at the board level. Uh, you're going to have a, you need to have a security committee at the board level, which reviews the controls independently, and the board represents interests of shareholders, whereas a CISO is an employee of a company. So a lot of the time, and a lot of companies, CISOs report into chief technology officer or chief financial officer, and that does not give them enough uh, influence to really impact change in the company. And by really having a security expert at the board level, you put the proper governance, you have somebody who's gonna raise a hand and say, wait a second, in this board materials, why we're not discussing the cybersecurity risks? So I think it needs to be a set of checks and balances where you also have somebody representing shareholders with security expertise and somebody a CISO uh, representing employees of a company and customers within the company. You had mentioned that there's, it's just so complex now. There's so many layers that go into the tech stack, right? Are, are there just too many vendors, too many players in, in the cyberspace right now? There's just too much access to you know, your tech stack. Very much so, you're, you're completely correct. So uh, what's happening? So a tech surface became much more complex. Digitization of information, proliferation of IoT, third party risk is on the rise. We're all interconnected to each other. So even if you do a great job protecting yourself, you send your paperwork to a law firm, they get hacked and you're in a cover of Wall Street Journal, right, for wrong reasons. So number one, a tech surface became more complex. Number two, too many security vendors. CISOs get so many calls every single day from thousands of companies where every company is offering better AI capabilities, but 99% of them don't work and then they don't integrate with each other. And so CISOs buy all these tools, they don't integrate with each other, they're drowning in information and it makes it much harder to figure out what are the one to two actionable things that you could do. And finally, too many companies are focusing uh, on preventing the inevitable, which is impossible, being hacked. Instead, they need to adopt a resilience mindset where you assume that you're gonna get hacked sooner or later and then you design your infrastructure in a zero trust way to make it as hard for attackers to inf exfiltrate information. Well, that's a great point. I mean, you'd rather be proactive than reactive. It's too late if you have to react, and too many people are, breach. And too many people are still reactive. 90% uh, of companies are reactive and uh, they don't use KPIs. They get too many tools. They don't integrate it. They don't talk at the board level and so you end up being reactive instead of proactive. All right, Alex, we appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks, and thanks for joining me. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.